Hey guys, here we are. It's a Friday night. Another week of life has passed by and we are still, believe it or not, on this 1950 silver tone arch top. Now, we've done a lot of work on the body, the neck, uh, joint, the tuners, cracks, busted up stuff finish everything and I am running a playlist up here and I'm going to add this video on to that so if you want to see start to finish now we're getting to the point where we're actually junk piling this thing up the matchbooks are on it they have something to do with a lot of stuff in California especially around LA and it's getting to the point now where we're going to make this thing come to life with sound and are them big tires on that truck really, well, that's status and wealth where I live. <laughs> so anyway, where was it? So we've put the matchbooks on. Now it's time to take a handful of wires and a pickup and see what this thing will do. I got a deadline on this thing because I have to take it out to somebody who is going to play it and they're just in the country for a little bit and they'll be gone that should give you a hint about who's going to play this but anyway let's get to the bench and i'm going to show you quickly how we are going to make this thing come to life okay let's do a quick rundown on what we are going to need we're going to need to think about this tail piece because when you put electricity through a guitar you need to ground the strings and this makes it very difficult. I would hate, with all these cracks and scraparatus we got here, to have an unsightly wire running around here. That would look, that would present very poorly. So um, we're going to need to think about changing this one out to maybe this one. Ooh, ah, it matches those tuners from the Birdhouse guitar. Did you see that episode up there? So we're going to think about changing this out. And you're going to need a pin and jack. And the whole idea between these two is they'll fit in here. We're going to ground this and that car that's driving by. It must be loud muffler this Friday night. Anyway, we're going to be able to ground the strings. We're going to put this in here somewhere. Um, we are going to uh, use this harness here that has... A volume pot and a tone pot and we're gonna uh, hook up a pickup to there uh, this is a very low profile pickup with a nice cover on it I'll give you a link to where to get this below um, and we're gonna need some some pushback wire I like this stuff and you're gonna need some solder and you're gonna need a uh, soldering iron and um, we all know from the past episodes I've done that when you solder, you're going to clean off your tip by dipping it in this wet sponge. And we're going to need some, this fine selection of shrink wrap. We don't want short outs and all those things. And most importantly, y'all are going to need some Jesus when you die. All right, let's start here. One of the worst things about these old guitars is they used flathead screws. I don't know why someone would do that. Oh, you want to remember, you got your magnet in your old Wrigley Double Mint chewing gum tin along with all the other parts you've put in here just in case somebody wants to get this stuff back again if you're working on somebody's guitar they may think enough about this stuff that you should give it back and that way it's pretty easy to price out the parts you put on it what's been changed out and I always try to do stuff that is replaceable or correctable if necessary now that's going to go in there that won't close now but that's not one of my major life dilemma 
dilemmas, dilemma, everything is in there. Now, I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of issues, but these holes are here. I don't want them there. So I'm going to take some, that's right, bacon flavored toothpicks and a little bit of glue and pop that in there like so and then snap those off and we'll get those holes closed up. Okay, this is pretty easy. Put a little bit of tight bond. I use a lot of hide glue, but there are times I like tight bond. So this is not a difficult technique. We're just going to pop that in there like that. Spin it around a little bit. Snap it off. You don't want to stick after a while. And we're going to do that four different times if I can ever find what I'm looking for here. There we go. We'll let this dry up a little bit and then we'll come back and pop everything in. Okay now we got this trapeze tail piece. I like these because you can adjust these and um, those notches hold strings pretty well. But the trick to this now is to center this up and because you have these holes here where glue is drying, you can kind of tell where everything is at. Center that up. Now, it's been my experience, if you're not careful doing this, the way this thing will pop up and so you'll be uh, drilling a hole there and then when you go to put it in there, you'll find out that this part is actually down a little bit. You don't want that. So you want to make sure that that is flush right there. Everything is lined up good. And you take your small pilot bit, of course, and your spinning table here. And we are going to make sure that that is all lined up and we're going to drill. One, two, three holes. But wait, there's more. We're going to have to drill a hole for a wire that's going to ground the strings to this. So, we are going to find a way to see where our holes are drilled. We got one, two, three. And then we're going to run a piece of this pushback wire through here, connect it over into here where the wiring harness is. And when it comes out of here, we're going to pull this pushback wire like this around it enough where it exits out of here. And then we wrap this end around one of the screws that holds on the trapeze and everything will be ground. You're going to see me using a piece of coat hanger once I get everything drilled and pushed the end of this wire through here uh, then I can fish it through the F hole up here with the coat hanger so let's get our hole drilled again up in here where it's underneath the trapeze and wrapped around one of our screws that will mount the trapeze now you want to remember that the tail block is here and it's fairly thick so there's one mounting hole, another, another there. So I think I'm just going to run this through the middle right here, like so, and then go all the way through till I know that the drill has gotten through the entire tail block. Okay, there we go. As we put this in, I'm going to start to get it to turn a little bit towards by doing this where I can see it's going to end up being fished out through the F hole there. All right, there we go. We're going to put a little bit extra slack and then we are going to cut this off like so here 
And we're going to want to wind this around up here so we're not always fishing that back out. I'm going to pull an ample amount of this back like so. Okay, here's the tricky part now. We're going to push this in and we're going to take one of these chick flick teal screws that I have right here. Ready? We're going to use this guinea pig one right here. And we're going to wrap that around there like that. You see that? Maybe open that up a tad more. And then we're going to bend this like so. And we're going to push that in there and finagle that to where we put the screw on here, through here, and then run that through there and everything will be grounded. Okay, just to show you what this looks like. Okay, another thing I want to show you here that I don't think too much about these guitars, especially when you start putting some weight on it. These things that will pop right out, they're kind of wedged and they weren't really built for somebody like Troy Mura. You know who that is. Let's take a look at him up there trashing around using his belt out of his Sunday pants and this old scrapparatus but what we're going to do is take advantage of this and we're going to put this here so you can put your strap on here and still have your pickup jack now sometimes I will mount these over here on the side over here you got to remember these sides are very thin and you might want to reinforce that with a piece of metal you got at least that's what a YouTube master certified luthierism does right there you saw it okay so we got this harness it's shielded which is good uh, but I really don't prefer this kind of a jack over this kind so we're going to take some pushback wire two different colors one's ground one's hot and we're going to figure out how to lengthen these out a little bit and we're going to drill this out and push this in here again. Everything has got to be fished up through an F hole because our control knobs are going to be right over in this area, right over here. All right, Monster Peace Theater, here we go. We'll get Perfect. Pilot holes going while we're here to hold the screws on. All right. Get the chick flick teal screws started here. Okay, real quick, again, we're going to do a bow in those, and we're going to fish this wire. Maybe we can twist it a little bit so it stays together, like so. But we're going to twist this pushback wire and get it over there where we can fish it out. And then once we do, we'll make the connection here. Now, I just want to tell you, I'm a firm believer in shrink wrap and I've got a bunch of it cut and so I'll take a piece of red and a piece of black and make sure that these connections here when I solder up the wires that these are covered like so. This is not a place 
where you want to be messing around with wiring in the future. Arch tops are infamous for having to use coat hangers and who knows what to dig stuff. Uh, anyway, let me get that fished out through there. All right, there we go. Again, we want to make sure that we tie these off up here so they don't fall back down through. Get, a, get us enough slack. Cut that off. Solder this. Okay, we've got some assistance from the Love Pencil here, and we are going to put our volume and tone controls there, and right about there. Then, of course, once we've got our holes drilled, we're going to take a reamer and smooth them up a little bit. And what do you know? Just right. Okay, the rest of this is pretty simple now. We've got uh, the hot and the ground coming off of our um, pin jack. And those will be hooked to the uh, ground and hot of this. Then we've got a ground wire that comes off and attaches to our string ground, which is in this loom right here. And then the last thing to do is to hook up the hot and ground to the pickup leads and we're good to go. Okay, before I forget, I can't stress enough about shrink wrap. Uh, I'm coming off of the harness where it goes to the jack and I want to use a piece of this red shrink wrap when I make my connection here to here and then once that's covered up the ground is okay because when I make these two connections everything will slip over under this big shrink wrap everything will be covered the last thing you want again is an electrical problem inside of an arch top There we go, easy money. Now it's just a matter of figuring out where to put this thing where it's not gonna hit the strings because again, student instrument action, very low. See you in a minute. Okay guys, wanted to catch up a little bit here. We are about to fish 
the potentiometers into the um, holes. Volume up front, tone in the back. When I drill the holes, I wanted to have you notice that I line them up kind of with the F hole, the way it's running. There's a, a plane running this way or parallel to that. And if I do that, I will not catch the grain. Whenever you run two holes along the same grain plane here, and work something and tighten it up, it's going to develop a split. And you can tell this guitar has been prone to splitting from drying out and things. So, I take dental floss, fish it down through the holes, put a loop in the end of it, like so. I've shown you how to do that with an endless choker. And then fish it through with your coat hanger. Now, I'm going to fish the back one in first of the tone pot. And so I'm going to take the nuts off here, like so. Always have a magnet close by. When you're doing this stuff, it'll try to fall off of here. And then... I use these, which are internal tooth washers, you see that? And I will put one of those on here. And that way, when I tighten up everything, this will sit up against the bottom inside of the soundboard, which is the top of the guitar, and it will stop these things from turning. Turning potentiometers after a while turn into broken wires and again you don't want to fish things out of an arch top. So this part is basically taking this big loop which I just dropped in there which is why I think half the reason I work on arch tops is no one else will, but you get used to problems like that. It kind of develops patience. Anyway, you're going to take this, draw a loop, like so. Make sure that your tooth washer is on here. You need seven hands to do this with. And then we're going to tie this on here down in that slot right there and tighten everything up. Now, if you put that loop down in here, the further down it is, the more this is going to want to tilt. And so when you try to pop this in, it's going to fight you the whole time. And now everything is trying to wind up around my wire harness, which I have put a zip, a little zip tie on. So anyway, I'm going to fish this down through here, wherever I can. Anyway, I will catch up with you when I get that done. Then we'll just pull these two up in here and put the nuts on them, get them in place. You know what? I decided once I got that in there to kind of show you my struggle here but if you use your stuff right there it is it pops up the string is pretty handy because you can put your washer like so and it'll drop down over that like so and then we'll put I like to double nut this stuff. I also like to put, believe it or not, a drop of Loctite on it. Once I get things going. And so they don't back out. Of course, you're going to want to line up your pots where they're not sticking out anywhere in here and where your harness is going the right way and whatever. But I like the dental floss method pretty well. Some people use surgical tubing 
and different things like that but this has been pretty handy for me especially when you don't have a cutout for a pickup to work with and you're gonna see me mess with that here in a minute anyway lefty loosey righty tidy you get the idea there you go all right guys I want to show you a couple little things here um, we've got the lock tied out and I have a spanner you see this it's got teeth here none here teeth here none here this is for taking these uh, knots off and on um, they also work great for um, tuner nuts um, and also prying off let's get on the right side prying off knobs just put a little piece of paper towel underneath them and if you got a uh, knob that won't come off you just pry that up now what I want to do here let me get these strings off hey look at this all not an owl but an all it works pretty good to loosen this stuff up like this. Sometimes this stuff is hard to get off. Dental floss, my favorite. Anyway, if you take a piece of paper towel like this and wad it up a little bit, you don't want Loctite all over your guitar, especially if it's an expensive guitar. So you just put the paper towel there put some Loctite on it and the paper towel will hold the Loctite without it getting on the top you see that oh I cut myself no I didn't it's red Loctite I love this stuff again if you start using um, the stuff starts working loose after a while and starts spinning around Remember, um, the tooth washer we put on there is a good thing. But So we're going to take this. I'm going to turn this all the way to the left. I can't see anything under here. That's important to me. But so then you just take the side. It's got the teeth on the right. And it's just lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. Don't get them over tight to the point where you crack everything you know what people tell me your hands always get in the way but you see that those those teeth just grab the nut like that and then whether some people are do or don't I always double nut my potentiometers Like so, and if that bottom one is tight, these things come in handy. You just get on the top one and crank that one down. There we go. All good. Okay, guys, let's get way out in the weeds. I'm fixing to put um, the pickup... And the pickup cover and I'm going to put it down by the bridge down here because this action is really really high on this thing so where it will land is right about there and it'll stay under the strings but I want you to pay attention you remember we did uh, an episode with this guitar called teeter totter neck it's up there and in that that episode we discovered that it wasn't so much the neck that was bad, but it was the top of the guitar and the sides and the block inside coming undone. So I have this in the vise, and I want you to pay attention here. This is one of these times I need a bunch of hands, but I want you to pay attention right there. So if I hold on to the neck and the body, I can flex this. Look at that. There is a good sixteenth of an inch right there. So when you're talking about action on one of these things I call a student instrument with a very shallow uh, fingerboard, 
a sixteenth of an inch here means a lot in the neck angle down there tilting back like so. So while I'm here, I have a sixteenth inch piece of veneer cherry and I'm just going to take my love pencil here ooh hot and I'm going to put this at the uh, frat where the fingerboard ends and I'm going to make a mark over here and one here I'm going to cut this section out and I'm going to taper this end on a belt sander because you can see that we will be able to slip that right in there and that will in effect pitch that neck back up and give us a little bit better clearance back here. See you in a minute. All right, we're gonna put some tape right along there. Do the other side the same way. And let's take a look. Got this piece of 16th inch cherry wood veneer. I took this edge of the belt sander, thinned it down, so there's a taper to it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some hide glue. The reason I'm using hide glue is because if I ever need to loosen this up, I'm going to be able to heat it up with a heat gun or hot palette knife. I'm going to put this here just in case. And I will be able to take this off. If you use something else, it's not going to work. So we're just going to put a little hide glue on the top and bottom of this here. And then when everything gets strung up here, a string tension is going to pull down and it's going to stabilize everything from sucking so down more so we're just going to put that in there like this and I am going to flex this down just a little bit and we're going to push that into there like so until we get to the edge And nobody will be able to tell what happened. Except you all. There we go. Easy money. Okay, now we're at the part where we're going to place the pickup on the body. Um, this is a thin f profile pickup, and it's got this cover to it. So it's basically drilling four holes for the screws and making sure it's centered this way and this way, and everything will clear. When you're putting your bridge on, you also want to remember if you've got a pickup right in front, you need, need to adjust these screws to allow you to put the intonation points here forward or back you want to make sure that this isn't in the way when you're trying to do that again arch tops or something else so the first thing we need to do here is put on a piece of tape because I'm going to want based on where this is I'm going to want the top of this to be right up here so I can use a point on the F hole one across from the other like so I can line this edge up with the top of the F hole here and do the same thing over here and I'll be good to go as far as straight then I take a, a straight edge here and I come down and I mark here and here. I want to remember the tone bars, there are tone bars that follow this edge all the way down 
not cross bracings running this way, but those tone bars are pretty thick. And remember I put a set of Gibson uh, pickups in a guitar for Troy Mura. That episode's up there right about now. Um, restaurant junk pile. So cutting into those things is kind of a pain here. But now I can take my... pick up there before I do that I want to measure and I like using millimeters so we're at 68 which means 34 is the center right there and if I take this and do the same thing It's at 86, so forty-three is the center of that. I put that there and I am good to go. So now everything is lined up perfectly, and I can just take the love pencil and make my marks and I'm going to use a very small bit to drill pilot holes there very carefully and guess what they are right into the tone bar I really don't want to drill all the way through, but I can feel resistance there. And then, oh, I have to show you a little trick. If you take a piece of wire like this and come in from the side, you'll feel the edge of the tone bar and if you want if it's bent like this on the end you can mark where the edge of the tone bar is with a pencil and then rotate this and hook the other side of the tone bar and make a mark there and you'll see how wide the tone bar is you're welcome anyway the wire for the pickup is going to have to go through a hole in the body midway. And again, I don't want to hit the tone bar on this one. Hole's going to be a little bit bigger. I'm going to fish that down there through the hole, hook this all up, and then bundle it all up and use one of these mini zip ties. And we're going to be good to go. Of course, you don't want to forget the chick flick teal screws available in small, medium, and large. Alrighty then, I think this is a good place to end this next to last episode about this 1950s silver tone uh, guitar. I've done a lot to it and this episode's plenty long already. So 
we're going to add this episode to the playlist up there, and we're going to put one more on the end when I show you everything I've done to it and take it to someone who can play just about anything. If you haven't, give me a like and a subscribe. And just remember, the reason I went through all this with this guitar is to basically show you when you pick something up really cheap, how many hours you're going to put into it to fix the things that are typically wrong with these guitars. So when you start adding up those hours and the parts and things like that, you start to figure out pretty quick that the only way to make these things valuable is to individualize them to a person. And that person, I don't know who likes a collection of yard sales, scrap apparatus all thrown together, but apparently there's a market out there because y'all watching me, right? Okay. Hey, thanks a lot. Hang with me and watch for next time when you finally get to hear this thing in the hands of somebody that's really good. See you then.